The Blue Jewel. Chapter 5. Part 9. The Denk was silent, as if surprised and looking at a particular spot in the room. It was the place where Vanus and the vase had disappeared. Arian stared amused at the Denka who closed the door slowly, keeping an eye on the place where the Kendali had theoretically disappeared. The Kendali can be made invisible. Gosberg said matter-of-factly to a surprised Arian and Vanus, that Gosberg discovered Vanus had such an impact on the Kendali that she let go of the vase, the object fell, they heard the sound, and the pieces scattered on the floor appeared before them. It's unbelievable. Babbled Vanus, still invisible. How did you discover me? The Denka smiled, said nothing, and lay down on the bed. I know a lot of things dear, like your incident with that wizard in the alley, it seems that you managed very well. They were both stunned by Gosberg's revelation and the Denka smiled again. I wouldn't be a good mercenary if I didn't notice those little details, my dears. Moreover, for your safety, I have requested His Majesty to travel with the retinue of his wives and daughters. That way you'll both be safer. Neither of them could say anything, but the Denka went on. Another thing I recommend is not to leave the village during this week, it seems that the white robes have asked the King of Beer to look for a foreigner from the north. They did not want to say why they want his capture. When Gosberg had finished saying this and left the room, the Kendali and the young woman looked at each other and smiled. If a Kendali was a mysterious being or Arian had a past that he hid at all, they could be compared to the Denka, who surprised them anew every day. Outside the room the half-orc was waiting for Gosberg, he was the one who told his superior about the disappearance of the girls and the presence of the wizard in the white robes. Gosberg had contacts in the court of the King of Beer and was immediately informed that the head of the order in Beer had asked the king to search for and arrest a young woman from the north, red and bottled. Arian. Why are the white robes looking for Arian? Agnorak's question was obvious, but perhaps the answer was not so easy. Gosberg lit a cigarette. They are magicians, I doubt they are interested in a young woman, no doubt they are looking for something that she has or that they think she knows where she is. Agnorak was silent, although he thought they were, it was the most important order of mags in the world, if they were looking for Arian it must be for something important. Don't worry Agnorak, the gods will provide. For the time being, do not separate yourself from them at all times and make sure that they do not leave this villa. The following week passed quickly with preparations for the return trip to Demember. Arian then learned that after a short crossing of the Sea of Ice, a hard march along the mountain range of the Dragon's Ridge awaited them. It was the first time that a caravan used the old southern road again, the king's previous attempts to bring iron to the south had failed, as a result of the assaults of some bandits, so this time he personally took care of this mission, transporting in a huge caravan with the amount of iron necessary for his kingdom. The Kendali and Arian hardly saw Gosberg all week and seemed to be very busy supervising the security of the trip, but they listened to the Denka and did not leave the villa, they secluded themselves in their room. He also came up with another idea, to dress, although he didn't like the style, in the same way as the women in the king's entourage. The one who was with them as long as his occupations allowed was the half-orc, although there was a bit of tension between him and Arian. Agnorak knew she was hiding a secret, but he didn't comment on the matter. Though Arian knew that Agnorak was with them to keep an eye on them. The king liked the idea of his guests traveling with his family. Although he did not understand how his guests did not agree to go with him to some of the events that were held in the city of Tame in honor of the king of Demember and his departure. So the day of departure arrived and Arian left the king's villa again with the rest of the entourage. When he arrived at the huge port he observed how the king's guard searched any young man who tried to get on a boat and when one was suspicious he approached a white robe to ask him some questions. The white robes were very powerful mags, now Arian realized, they were able to mobilize the army of the King of Beer to search for a girl. 
For his part, Agnorok was intrigued as to what the hell Arian was up to for such a deployment in his quest. The guards did not even attempt to search the retinue of the king of Demember, as he was a solemn guest of his king, but when one of the magicians with some arrogance tried to search the king's family, Gosberg appeared and with a threatening tone warned him. Bastard! How dare you insinuate that! These are the wives and daughters of His Majesty Dasmir Ilamabad II, the personal guest of the King of Beer. I should kill you right here and hang your stupid head from the mast of the king's ship so everyone can see how foolish you are. As he quickly drew a dagger from the wizard, Agnorak reminded the Gosberg that he had slain these wretched bandits. This threat was effective, no soldier or wizard came near the royal entourage. Arian embarked and remained in his cabin until they sailed from the harbour. It was Vanus who warned him to go up to the deck and watch the spectacle. At that moment the boat was passing under one of the huge arches of the elf bridge and everyone screamed in great amazement. Its immensity. The marble still retained its immaculate white and was very bright despite the thousands of years that had passed since its construction. You couldn't see the passage of time. It was much more beautiful seen up close and really stunning. Everyone looked at him with joy, everyone except the Denka who knew it was only a small memory of a very beautiful past. Once they had moved away from Tame and its wall built over the sea, most of them retired to their cabins. Only Arian now stared at the coast of Beer and thought of his home and the day he had said goodbye to his Caesarea at dawn. She cried for a moment but turned and looked at the horizon, where the ship was heading again, heading for an unknown destination, as it had been in that dawn. He had to get to the south, he had to warn his brother of the danger he was in. And that was really what mattered to her, and for that reason she had lost everything and was now embarked on an adventure that she didn't know where it would end. Immersed in her thoughts she noticed how someone stood next to her, it was the half-orc who wiped away her tears with his fingers, Arian smiled. You don't need to tell me anything, but what the hell are you up to, Arian? The young woman cried again and looked at the horizon but did not answer. Arian stood silently gazing at his longed-for sea. Agnorak hugged her, and they remained silent for a long time.